Welcome back to another weekly GMBN Tech Show. Coming up on this week's show, we check out the new colours of the Mojo 3 by Ibis Bikes. We also look at a very special bike from Starling. It's a steel single speed downhill bike. We got some wicked top mods for you guys. And of course, we announced the winner of the Santa Cruz Nomad Bike Build Bike. Okay, so first up, we'll jump into news. First up in the news is Ibis Bikes. One of my favorites, actually. I think they're really nice looking bikes. They've got the Mojo 3, so it's not a new bike, but it does come in a couple of new colorways now. So first up on the screen is Obsidian Black. So quite a sort of uh, interesting name there. And the next one, which I actually prefer, is Shark Bite. So they actually put this image up on their Instagram page of uh, basically a ripoff of the Jaws poster, that iconic one where Jaws is coming up from the bottom of the sea with their uh, shark bite color. But actually, I think the color is a little less Jaws and a little more Yeti blue. Um, nothing wrong with that. I think Yeti blue color is one of the nicest bike colors available on the planet. Interested to hear what you guys actually think. Should anyone else be using the Yeti blue color? Uh, even though it's not officially that, it's a shark bite. Or should it only be reserved for Yetis? I actually think it looks wicked and I would have that one out of those two. But uh, let's have a look at some of the features of the bike. So up front it's running a 66.8 degree head angle on there. It's 130 mil travel platform out back. And of course it runs on the DW Link, the Dave Weagle Link system. And it's definitely one of the better iterations of that frame design out there. Up front it's designed around 140mm travel fork and 27.5 inch wheels but it will also accept 27.5 plus size so 2.8 to 3 inch tyres there. So out back it's of course the Boost 148 system. There's four frame sizes available, it's full carbon fibre so it's very lightweight and very durable and it comes with a 7 year no quibbles warranty to reflect that. Next up in news is Specialized have just got a new tyre on the market. It's called the Eliminator. Quite an aggressive name there, of course, from Specialized to all the other tyres. They've got the Butcher and, of course, they've got the Hillbilly. Now, this one sits somewhere in the middle of those two tyres. Now, the Butcher, I guess you would compare it to something like the High Roller from Maxxis and the Hillbilly, something perhaps like the Magic Mary from Schwalbe. And this sits directly in the middle. So, I guess... Fairly similar sort of targeted tyre to the Minion DHR2. Of course, they've all got quite aggressive names. There's already the Butcher on the market and the Hillbilly. And of course, this one, the Eliminator, sits in between those two models. So I would say the Butcher is fairly similar to something like a Maxxis High Roller, quite an aggressive all-rounder trail tyre, but definitely more focused towards dry conditions. Whereas the Hillbilly, a bit more like a Magic Mary, perhaps from Schwalbe, more focused to softer, more aggressive conditions. And you guessed it, the Eliminator sits right bang in the middle. I'd say it's something like, I reckon, a DHR2 from Maxxis. Now here's all the specs of that tyre. So it comes in 27.5 in a 2.3 size and also in a 2.6. So that's kind of like the wide trail standard that Maxxis have been bringing in. Also in a 29 by 2.3, a 29 by 2.6. Now the rubber compound itself is called Gripton. And what they've done this time from Specialized is deliver something with a very soft compound, but it's actually got a faster rebound than others. So it basically the knobbles get back into shape a bit quicker. So in theory, it should roll faster at least. And more tyre news. This time is from E13 Components. Now they've got a semi-slick tyre out now and it's, well, it's called the semi-slick. Quite an imaginative name there. Now it shares a lot of similarities to the other popular semi-slicks on the market. So there's the Maxxis Minion uh, SS, so that stands for semi-slick. There, of course, is the WTB Riddler rear tyre and, of course, the Schwalbeit Rock Razor. Only all of them have that very fine file tread pattern on the main part of the tyre and of course those aggressive side knobs. But the E13 has got slightly more going on on the main tread. So it definitely looks like it's going to be a fast rolling tyre, but I reckon it's going to have a little bit more grip in quite varied conditions than perhaps some of the other options available. Now there's three options available within this tyre. So there's a single ply casing, and that's a TRS. There's a single ply with the apex casing on there, so it's a reinforced sidewalls on there for resistance against uh, pinch flats and stuff like that, and a bit more stability at lower pressures. And of course, there's the dual ply casing, which is a downhill casing, and that's also got apex, so that's super heavy duty. Now, there's two different compounds in there. There's the race compound, which is soft and tacky, and of course, there's the plus compound, which is basically a harder base on there. So. Good selection of tyres there from E13. A lot of the tyres actually are really good and I think quite underrated because, again, you're going to fly under the radar with a lesser known tyre brand to the, the big guns out there, the Continentals, the Maxis, the Schwalbe's. So another tyre definitely worth looking at. And of course, check out the rest of their range too. 
Uh, next up is a new version of the Cane Creek Helm. So they've got a 29 inch wheel compatible version. Now the Cane Creek Helm is one of the most impressive and most adjustable forks out there on the market. Now the internal, well, in fact the whole fork is fully US made, which is quite a rarity these days. It costs 1100 US dollars. It's not a very competitively priced fork when you consider Fox and RockShox and the staple options that are out there. However, this fork, I can assure you, is a fantastic option. It's got several unique things built into it. So you can adjust the air volume internally, it's got a rod and you can basically move like a space up and down on the rod. You don't need any plug-in spaces or any additional parts as part of the fork. You can also adjust the travel on the fork again without having to change the air tube which is the regular way of doing it on most modern forks. It's all adjustable internally and it's very very simple to do that. It's also got separately adjustable and completely separate chambers for positive and negative air pressure. So you can set the fork up to feel exactly the way you want. Again, emphasizing the fact you can do this in combination with the air volume as well. So you can have a fork that feels very progressive. You can have a fork that feels very linear if you want, and you can adjust the feel with that negative spring, how soft it's gonna feel off the top over those pattery sort of smaller hits. Very, very grippy fork. It's also got the D-Lock system, which is their own take on the axle. It's a square, basically, axle that slides in. So it's a super stiff fork. It's very light. And the coolest thing about this now, so the $1,100 price tag that was so, uh, we put a lot of people off, they've dropped it down now to 899. So I think it's a fantastic fork and 100% worth looking at. Of course, it's by no means cheap, but you can do everything with it. And finally in the news this week, there's a couple of new products in the Muckoff range. So they're, more like hygiene products, I guess you'd call them. So first up is an antibacterial uh, equipment cleaner. So this is basically for spraying on anything that's gonna get stinky to avoid it getting that stuff, the inside of your helmet, your shoes, all that sort of stuff. So quite nice to see a dedicated mountain bike product for that. And they've also got Sweat Protect. So it's basically a corrosion inhibitor. And you would use this, for example, I mean, they're aiming these at people doing winter training on turbo trainers and stuff. So there you go, a couple of products for Muckoff that you might not have ever known you needed. Um, they both retail for $9.99 in the UK pound sterling or $11.99 in euros. Okay, now it's time for Bike Cave, which is, of course, where we get to check out where you store your bikes, where you tuck them away at night, perhaps where you look after your bikes, or perhaps where you kick back and have a beer and just look at your bike. Um, if you want to send some entries in of Bike Caves, take some great shots, tell us all about it, and use our uploader link. It's right there on the screen. Super easy to do, and tell us as much information as you can. We love knowing this stuff. We're going to kick off with Michael from Las Vegas in Nevada. Hi, GMBN crew. I turned out half my garage into a bike shop for my stable of bikes. They include a titanium carver, Narvesta single speed, a specialized carbon six fatty, a specialized fat boy 29 plus, Kona Honzo steel hardtail. You like your hardtails, don't you? you? Could tell that. A 2019 Salsa Timberjack 27.5 plus single speed, and a giant TCX gravel bike. I taught myself to build all my mountain bikes and wheels, so I've collected a sizable amount of tools. Watching your channel and seeing what other people have done to their bike cave inspired me to get mine organized. I'll tell you what, this is looking sweet. So you've got a rolling tool chest, kind of like this one here that we have, but I see you've got a bench mounted work stand on it. So the park, that's, I think that's the pro one, isn't it? I love that idea. That's a really good use of space and by mounting it on the end, it's not gonna tip over as well. Good use of stickers as well, by the way. Good old sticker bomb in there. Your magnetic part tool trays, super useful. I love those, I've got a few of those at home. Um, it looks like you've got a Topeak Joe Blow Booster pump as well. You're definitely kitted out. You have been watching what we've got here. Nice, oh, you've got a trail cat. Oh, just on, on Blake's rules alone, you deserve to win the bike cave just because you've got a trail cat. Plenty of stickers there. Slippery Pig Bike Shop. That's an interesting name, Bike Shop. Um, nice tool chest, absolutely loaded. Loads of good stuff in there, pleased to see. Oh, loving the look of the tie bike. Wow, what did you say? That was the Narva, the Carva Narfest. That's really nice, dude. Good colour coordination as well with the chain ring, the, uh, the spacers, and of course the saddle. And there's that SDG I beam. Yeah, very nice. And you've got a Park Tools bottle opener, but you've uh, you've ruined that photo completely by having some Coke Zero in there. Prime entry for a bottle of uh, Sierra Nevada or something. Um, when will people learn this sort of stuff? I'll tell you what though, really, really like what you've got going on. Absolutely crammed tool chest. And I'm really pleased that you actually, you follow what we do and you're obviously doing this stuff at home. So that's super cool. And I hope you can pass on all the knowledge that you've learned to your friends. Really cool, and really appreciate all your decent photos. So thank you, Michael, and uh, just get a bottle of beer on the side and still a bottle of Coke, yeah? Okay, so next up is from Wim in the Netherlands. Nice. 
Okay, so you've got a Kona Dork, you've got a high bike 7.10, and you hang it up in your bedroom. Looking good. The other picture is my workspace. Right, let's have a look for all these. I like the shelf. I love the fact you've got a pair, well, three sets of tires there as the brackets for the wall. That's a smart idea. I am fully robbing that idea. I've been looking what to make shelves out of actually for my bike cave. I have got like a couple of old like ancient carbon rims. I was thinking of hacking them up into four pieces, into quarters and using that sort of, you know, as an underneath bracket for a shelf. But uh, I quite like the tires because I've got loads of old worn out tires. That's a good use of the rubber. That. And then a simple, Noose, I guess, of a uh, rope on the top there. Nice pegboard, fully loaded. Looking good, dude. A lot of kit stacked up in there. Oh, and you've got Stevens bike set up on your uh, turbo trainer pain cave as well. Yeah, always important to uh, keep fit in the winter. Good way of doing things. And another cool shelf hanging from the wall. I like the way you've done these. That's a really nice approach. So what's that? That's a dirt jump bike. I don't think you listed that one. Classic looking bike, actually. Nice simple design so linkage driven single pivot just worked and got it right the first time around do like kona been around for a long time and man that company's got some funny stories of some of their bikes the names they've called their bikes and some of the jokes that their employees have played um, we'll pick that one up actually on another part of the show on rewind maybe next week funny bike names from bike manufacturers and in fact cove as well another canadian company must be something in the water they've got some incredible names or, or uh, questionable names that's for sure ah and we're out of the bike cave thank you everyone for sending those entries in keep them coming okay now let's take a trip down memory lane it's time for rewind which of course is a retro section of the show get your retro stuff into us doesn't matter what it is pair of old toe clips maybe some race number plates from a race you did way back in the day or perhaps your parents racing whatever it is send it in use the upload link there it is again on the screen tell us where the picture was taken, who it was taken by, what it's of, what it's about, ask us some questions, just keep this stuff coming in, we love it. So first up is from Ross, uh, location Loch Ness, up in Scotland. So this is a 1996 GT Zasker, remember them very well. I think it still looks as good now as it did back then, to be honest, I mean, a little bit dated because they're quite short now, but such a like timeless looking frame with that triple triangle design on them. But I've spotted something on the front that's already given me clammy hands because that is a seriously rare fork, the Marzocchi Bomber RAC. So that's a inverted fork design with a carbon one piece upper. Man, those things are rare as rocking horse like you just don't see them. I'm not aware that they actually made them that public. I thought they made a certain amount of them. They went to industry people and some pro riders. I know that one of the UK importers or the ex-importers of these, a guy called Dan Jones, who does watch this show. I know he's got loads of cool retro bikes and he's got a set of these forks. And I think that's the only set I've ever actually seen. So really cool to see these. Man, so futuristic. It's funny, look at that fork now. That could be a modern fork, really, by all accounts. And it's almost got a bit of a built-in fender sort of look to the top of it there. Interesting to see you've got one of those enormous physique saddles on there. I can't remember what the model was, but that was a whole era of everyone going for those ridiculously big saddles. STG made one called the Big Boy. Do you remember that? It was literally about twice the width of any normal saddle. I don't know who it was made for, but um, they were really good if you like broke a pedal or slipped a pedal because it's just like landing on a sofa. But uh, as a result of that, the rails used to bend because they were so big. But super cool to see this. I like the fact you say it used to have Judy XC, so that's the RockShox Judy XC, which I think had 60 mil travel uh, on there. And then STXRC, it was the original build that you put on there, inspired by Hans Ray and Jez Avery in MBUK. Jez Avery, man. So Jez Avery still does a stunt show. In fact, I'm going to put a link in the description below this video to his stunt show because it's really cool. And he actually performed this stunt show at the Malvern Hills Classic last year, which was a retro event brought back to life by a guy called Cy Payton. And that's going to happen again next year. I'm definitely going to be there. Um, maybe do some racing. I'll see if I can get myself a retro bike for the slalom and that. It's like a really, really cool event. And Jez Avery, man, there's some funny stories about him. So he was like a British bunny hop champion, I think, for ages. He was in Team Hot Pies. Um, crazy name. And I don't know where he got a name from, but I do know a cool story about Jez. Is when he was riding for Team MBUK back in the day. He basically wouldn't get out of bed unless you gave him a hot meal. This guy wouldn't do, you know, lunch breaks when everyone's happy chomping down on a sandwich and getting back on their bike. Jez had to sit down with a knife and fork and have a hot meal. Proper northerner. Love it. Next up, we have got Declan in Adelaide, South Australia. This is my dad when he was younger. Um, he built this bike from scratch when he was racing for Giant Australia. So that's really cool. So you've got a press jersey in the frame there with Team Giant. So he obviously raced on the Giant Australian team. That's really cool. Um, you haven't told us what his name is. and I can't quite see in that poster. It's not, resolution is not quite good enough. 
Um, it'd be really cool to, to know his name, just for reference. So I can see, it looks like, uh, is that Sean McCarroll that's in there? If it is, uh, Sean McCarroll, of course, he was one of the Mudcouse riders. It was in the videos back in the day. Lunatic on a bike, absolutely phenomenal rider. Um, would absolutely hammer it downhill. So that's really cool that your dad was on this team. But I do find it interesting that whilst he was racing uh, on Team Giant, he was building himself a Gary Fisher bike. What's the story with that? But um, really cool to see the bike. And there you go, there's a shot of him actually on that bike. Not wearing a Team Giant kit there, obviously. But look at that Gary Fisher. So that's a Genesis. Man, what a bike. So you've got a pair of the bombers on there. Is that a Z2 or a 3? I forget, it's in like, the atom green colour. You've got Marzocchi HS33s. I don't, they're not the race line, they're the red model and what are those wheels they look really familiar i'm gonna say they're spinnages or something like that because they've got those i think they were like kevlar spokes or something that screwed into the hub i can't quite remember how they worked but i'd love to see another set of those up close to see see what the score is but you've got a suspension seat post on there i'm gonna throw it out there and say it's either a zoom or a use i'd, I'd like to say it was use because they were the first people to do them uh, you've got grip shift up front is that profile stem flipping heck yeah, profile stem, it's like a tiller. Looks like the sort of thing you see on the back of a barge that you go sailing with, rather than you put on the front of a bike for control. No wonder we got away from them. But uh, nice to see on a retro bike. And that is a cool bike. Thank you so much for sending that in. But definitely drop us a line. Let us know why your dad was uh, moonlighting building, building Gary Fishes while he's racing for Giant. That's a pretty cool story. And tell us who he is. Cheers for that, Declan. Next up is from Garrett. So Garrett's in Ohio, USA. Now, this is a 1996, what is it with 1996? Seems to be the magic number, doesn't it? Klein Attitude Team. Man, Klein's have always been one of my favorite bike brands. Just beautiful back in the day. And this one, again, really nice. Well, I don't remember that color. Is it possible that's a custom? Um, not, not really sure, to be honest. They, they had that three-way paint effect before they went to linear fade, which, of course, was the color we used to see where it'd be, say, pink from the front and blue from the back, which, depending on which angle you looked at the bike. But the original one was pink, white, and green. Of course, this one's white, yellow, and red, so I don't remember seeing these. Uh, got a set of Judy SLs on the front there. Again, lovely piece of kit. Uh, I bought this frame set brand new in 96 and raced it hard. It's sat silent though since 2002. There's no way I'm getting rid of it, but I want to get it rolling again just for riding around with the kids. It's an amazing piece of engineering and workmanship, but a little unorthodox with a headset and fork being the main issue for me. I need to replace the original Judy as the stanchions are corroded inside and the elastomers have disintegrated. Uh, everything else I can piece together. Do you have any suggestions? Oh, dude, do you know what? That's, that's an old fork. I don't know what you would do to restore that, to be honest. Um, so of course, like, looking at the stem on there, it's like the Mission Control style stem from Klein. They had their own, it's like an evolution style um, headset size, inch and a quarter perhaps. I don't know what you'd have to do. Um, has anyone out there got any old retro RockShox Judy stuff? It doesn't have to be from an SL. It could be from a Judy DH or a Judy XC anything you can help out Garrett with, that'd be super cool if you could post in the comments below. Your best bet, Garrett, though, would be to speak to your SRAM or RockShox distributor and see if they can get any leads from any of the other global distributors or direct. I know that the guys in the UK at TF Tune, they've got a big collection of retro stuff, and it is definitely worth just pinging them an email just by chance they might have a Crown Steerer unit from, from back then. Um, but hopefully you'll be able to find it. If not, check out Retro Bike. So it's a website dedicated to old school bikes. And the forum on there is really good. The people in there might be able to help you track one down. Um, hopefully you can get it restored. I'd love to see some pictures if you get it up and running again. But uh, yeah, thanks for that, dude, and good luck. And now it's time for Top Mods. This is all about the little modifications you make to your bikes to make them a little bit different from your friends or a little bit different from the stock ones you buy in the shops. Doesn't matter what it is, honestly. It could be a saddle, it could be a pair of grips, or it could be a complete rebuild. Whatever you're doing, take some photos of it, be proud of it, send them in to us. Link bottom of the screen there for our uploader. Take some pictures, fill in the details, tell us what you've done and we'll put you on the show. So first up this week is from Cameron in Chorley, Lancashire. Uh, so that's in the UK. Pictures of my build from frame to finish. Nice, you've done your own bike build. So it's a Kingdom Vendetta X2. Man, that's a serious bike. That's a really, really nice frame. So I've changed the cable colors on everything from black to either gold or silver braided. It's 2.8 tires on, Ma on uh, Mavic 40 mil rims. Wow, so super plus size there. Uh, SRAM guide ultimate brakes in silver, of course, to match the frame. Rental fat bar carbon bars, SRAM drivetrain, reverb stealth seat posts and chroma grips. Of course, you've got a race face crank on there too. Oh man, look at the welding on that thing. That is so tidy. 
So am I right thinking the Kingdom of Danish? I think they're from Denmark, aren't they? Um, really, really nice looking. I mean, to me, it looks very typical of some of those other beautiful British-made frames, like from Starling and Curtis Bikes. So there's kind of a bit of a niche there for those really cool frames. And of course, Kingdom are another one of those brands. Look at that head tube. That's amazing. That's all gusset on the underneath there. Really, really nice. And the head tube badge is even really nice too. Oh man, how cool does the uh, the braided hose look going into the reverb? That's trick. I might have to do that on some, on some bikes. Well into that. Fox 36 up front, of course, with the orange graphics on there. Oh man, so you've got the high speed, grip to damper, dual control on there, so you've got low speed and high speed compression adjustment externally. That's a seriously good fork. So much adjustment. But at the same time, as good as that fork is, it's really easy to mess it up. So if you don't know what you're doing, um, not suggesting that looking at your bike choice, I reckon you know everything about that. But um, I've seen a lot of people mess up the handling of their bikes with having a fork like that with too much adjustment. It can be quite confusing at times, actually. Now, your bike does look sweet. The uh, rental bar and stem combo looks really good on there. To be honest, everything does. It's cool to see someone else doing a bike build. Oh, nice, no, got those little Uber bike uh, brake mount adapters as well, just to match in with the colours too. And the BB as well. Trick. Looking good. And there she is, fully built. Oh, you've also got an oval chainring on there. Didn't spot that before. Oh man, Cameron, that's a really, really tidy looking bike. Proper UK sort of spec bike on there as well with those tyres and the amount of clearance that frame has got. Nice, so that's your Kingdom Vendetta. Very nice. Uh, next up is from CRT in Slovenia. Hey Doddy, these are my mods on my bike. I know it's not a top brand like YT, Canyon, etc., but still the bike's amazing. Dude, that's not what it's about. It's about having a bike that you like riding, it really. There's loads of cool brands out there, there's loads of brands that aren't cool. It honestly doesn't matter. It's about getting out there and doing it. And of course, by modifying your bike, you can make it personal to the things that you like. So the bike's a 140mm Travel 29er. I changed the stock plastic pedals with Crank Brothers stamps. Nice, did you go for the big ones or the small ones? Can't quite tell from that picture. It looks possibly like you've gone for the big ones. Uh, 720mm flat handlebars were switched uh, to a six pack kamikaze rise handlebar. Um, full width as well on there. Stock and harsh grips were changed with fabric mushroom shaped magic grips. Yeah, they're really nice. They're the ones we put on the uh, bike build Santa Cruz. Yeah, of course they've got a bit of the bulge in the middle. It sits into the palm of your hand. Quite a unique design. Not something we've really seen. In mountain biking form, in Ergon I've got some like funky grips with hand support, but then only other people we've really seen do that. Uh, the wheels are now set up tubeless, and I've also changed the tyres. Before it had Hutchinson Toro 2.1 cross country tyres. Uh, yeah, they're not bad tyres to be fair, but yeah, a bit harder compound and quite small. And you've bumped up in size. So you've gone for Continental Trail King 2.4 and Mountain King 2.4 uh, Trail King up front, Mountain King out back. Dude, that looks really good. You've done some, like, you've really thought about things you want to do to that bike. That's a rock rider as well. Nothing to worry about with that. They're fine. No problem at all with the B Twins. Um, looks really good as well, actually. I like the all black Manitou fork up front there. The tyres definitely look way beefy. I bet it's got to be loads more fun to ride. Looking good, mate. I'll tell you what is a slight problem with that bike. It's not dirty enough. I think you need to get out and get out dirty. But thank you so much for sending that in. That's a great set of top mods you've done on there. Okay, now it's time for Tech of the Week. I've got something very different for you here, in fact. So I've got a steel 29 inch wheel, 180 mil travel downhill bike from the UK, and it's single speed. Yeah, so a single speed steel downhill bike from the UK. So it's made by Starling and it's called the Stern. This is it on screen now. I think you'll find this, I think you'll agree with me, it's a really, really nice looking bike. But uh, so this one's handmade in steel in the UK. Uh, custom geometry is available and custom colors at no additional cost. So you pick the bike as you want it, which is really cool. So it's got 29 inch wheels on it for flat out speed, single speed for low maintenance and simple riding. And something I noticed on this particular build, so it uses a jack shaft system to get around the fact it's got a high pivot on there uh, without having to run an idler wheel, which would be a nightmare with a single speed because it's gonna have so much tension on it. So the jack shaft, actually, you've got the chain, driving chain ring is on the left-hand side, so non-drive side and then it drives all the way through from the top pivot there down to the rear wheel. It's a half link chain, BMX chain, so that thing's pretty much indestructible. Fairly weighty, but I think for the amount of weight you save by taking other stuff off, negligible really. And of course, that's not what it's about anyway. So you wouldn't, if you're chasing weight, you would probably be on a carbon bike or something like that. This bike is for smashing in bike parks and 
generally hammering and not having to worry about things like a derailleur braking. So I am all for that. I think it's really cool. Room for up to 2.7 tires in there. Uh, Reynolds 853 tubing, so that's that magical 853. So I bet it's got really nice ride attributes to it. Custom butted down tube um, and adjustable geometry. Okay, now it's time for bike build, which of course means I'm gonna be announcing the winner any minute now. Firstly, I just want to say a huge thanks to all of you, even those who didn't enter the competition, for all the comments, all the participation, the whole thing was supposed to be, you know, a bit of banter between all of us, a bit of a community building project, and at the end of the day, giving this bike away. And there were so many amazing competition entries from all of you out there, they're really good, love the effort that everyone went to, but of course, only one person can win. And we've had, over the last week, been counting up all the entries. There's a few numbers scrolling past on the screen there. It's a fact of where the, some of the voters have been from, how many voters we had. And it was actually quite close. So 60% of the total votes we had were all between that top three. It was quite close. But the winner, the winner can only be one, is Evo from Slovakia. So congratulations. You're going to be the guy riding away on the Santa Cruz Nomad bike build bike. So over the next few days, you can expect to hear from us and we're going to sort out how we're going to arrange getting the bike to you or perhaps if you want to pick the bike up, whatever works best. So keep an eye out in your inbox for that. And in the meantime, I just want to play your video again because just to remind everyone why you've won the bike. Hi, my name is Ivo. I'm from Slovakia and this is my bike. <whistles> Nevertheless, Recently I fell in love with mountain biking, because it isn't really about the bike, is it? Before I used to be a mountain runner, climber and a skier, but then this happened. So I had to relearn how to walk afterwards. Running is not an option for me anymore. My leg is partially paralyzed and screws in my back hurt a lot when I try. So I had to look for another way to keep myself fit. It took me a year and a half, but in the end my old bike is what brought me back to the mountains and I will be forever grateful for that. But it kinda feels like it might break any minute now, so I could really use a new one. What do you say? So there we go, once more, thank you everyone for entering the competition. It's definitely inspired me to come up with some other ideas for some more cool projects like this. So keep an eye out for some more really cool giveaways in the future on GMBN Tech. And congratulations once more to Evo. Keep an eye out for Evo on GMBN Tech because we're definitely gonna be doing something with him and his new bike. So there we go, there's another weekly GMBN Tech show in the bag. Hopefully you enjoyed the ride. For a couple more great videos, click down here if you want to see everything about Neil's bike that he rode in Iceland. That's a titanium, it's like a custom moot softtail. Quite a cool bit of kit, that. And click up here for our essential series. So that's all the basic videos on looking after your bikes. In fact, there's a lot of detail in them, so definitely worth watching. As always, don't forget to click on the globe to subscribe to GMBN Tech and give us a thumbs up if you like the channel.